Hello dear friends, a great welcome to this series on Idea Statica member. Myself Jaraj and P. This is tutorial number 37. Here I will demonstrate how to verify a continuous beam laterally restrained both at the supports and at mid span using Eurocode EC3. Now, as we are using the same model of tutorial number 36, model development will not be discussed in detail in this tutorial and instead, users shall go through the tutorial number 36 before this drop. And here, before getting into the details of this tutorial, I would like to just quote one of the comments I received uh, through my YouTube channel. One of the users highlighted, Sir, they said, uh, member design and verifications, it takes a lot of time if I go to the through the idea statica member route. So I uh, actually agree with this problem, but I want to highlight one very important thing. For uh, conventional B, B members, for example, the platform supporting beams and all, uh, you can very well use the conventional uh, softwares like, for example, the ETAPS, uh, the SAP2000, etc., which has got an inbuilt design module uh, and uh, it allows you to make a cube design of all these members. But the relevance of idea static member comes not in such cases. It will be very, very much uh, beneficial or it will be very much efficient when we go for the verification of the critical members. For example, suppose I want to uh, do the exact detailed verification of a beam that is supporting a reactor, a big tall vessel, or a beam that is supporting a big uh, cement silo, or for example, the case of a play girder, or maybe a uh, what we call as a, a gantry girder. So in such cases, a detailed verification of uh, the strength uh, from the point of view of the material, from the point of the view of buckling, can be performed only using idea static member. This cannot be done in the conventional softwares like the ETAPS of SAP 2000. Further, I would like to tell you that uh, the idea static also allows you to apply the load at any locations. It allows you to uh, provide the facility of uh, uh, local strengthening of the members like the provision of the stiffness etc. It allows you to apply the load at any eccentricity and it allows you to take care of uh, uh, any kind of uh, what we call as uh, the uh, linear non-linearity etc. So um, uh, that way uh, please ensure that you apply the idea static member uh, first of all to critical members. The priority will be for the critical members okay uh, for which a detailed investigation regarding the strength and the buckling has to be uh, performed and uh, uh, as the viewer has uh, highlighted it takes a lot of time in fact it will not take much time okay maybe that for the first time you will feel that it is taking a mem is taking some time it's a it's a normal problem associated with any new software but once you started you know practicing it you will be a master of it and you will be able to manage the problem very quickly so let us proceed with the problem statement. Yes, as you can see that this is again the same continuous beam we have used in an earlier tutorial. But in this case, what makes it unique is that I have introduced an additional restraints at mid spans as you can see here. That means you can see that the spans, each span is restrained at mid span using the two beams here. And this is the lateral restraint that is already provided in the earlier tutorial. So we have provided the same uh, material S355, the same section IP300 and loads are being kept the same and uh, uh, we have computed the positive moment of resistance as 223 km per meter and now when these beams are not provided in the earlier tutorial we have found, we have uh, concluded that it is a LTB that governs the design and that the um, design strength will be in fact only 0.46 times the full plastic moment of resistance but in this present case, after a detailed investigation with idea statica, we find that there is enough factor of safety against lateral torsion buckling and which is observed to be 2.17. Therefore, when we provide the beams at the uh, mid spans for lateral restraints, we find that uh, LTB will not go in the design. In fact, the capacity of this continuous beam will be controlled only by the sectional resistance. So now let us, uh, uh, let me take you to the idea statica tutorial. Uh, I will be just um, uh, telling you how to introduce these two beams, right? Because we already have the earlier model. And then I will just perform the uh, material non linear analysis, MNA, and also uh, we will um, perform the linear buckling analysis, LBA. 
and then uh, conclude uh, our uh, observations of the tutorial. So as you can see, it's the same model of a tutorial number 36. So first, what we like to do is we would like to add two lateral restraints at uh, mid spans, that is at locations uh, 2.5 meters and at location of uh, 7.5 meters. So what we can do is we can just select this uh, M1. So we would like to introduce an intermediate node. So obviously it will ask you where you want to introduce the intermediate node. We want to introduce. For example, at the mid span of this beam, okay, of this span, that is, we can add the location at 2.5 meters. And here, I, I would like to introduce a member in the y direction, okay, only on one side. So what we do is, we can add a related members that will provide a restraint at this location, okay, in the y direction. So we'll use an ended. Ended means it will be only on one side. So you can just add it Y. So you can see that yes, Idea Statica has had a, a member that is a RM8 that will provide a lateral restraint at X is equal to 2.5 meters. So similarly, what we do is that we also provide uh, another restraint, similar restraint at the mid span for this length also. So we'll proceed, proceed the same thing. So ensure that first you select the analyzed member AM1. So we just provide an intermediate node. So at the intermediate node, obviously we would like to have it at uh, 7.5 meters, 7.5 meters. And in a similar way, we add it y equal to uh, y in the y direction and the connection. So we find that we have successfully added two lateral restraints, RM8 and RM9. So accordingly, if you look into the connections, you will find that two connections are automatically generated by idea statica we need to just edit it for example let, let's just see uh, before getting into these connections what about the rm8 and rm9 rm8 just to see it what is that member so here you can see that it is a ipe 300 uh, which is uh, almost the same as the size of this main beam so what i would like to do is i would like to add to a smaller size so for example, I will add say IP240, okay. So you can see that that's IP240. And as you can see that this IP240, this is IP300. So there's a difference of uh, say 30 mm uh, in the depth that we can add it as an uh, EZ of say 30 mm. So that the two uh, top of structures will be the same. So 30 mm and uh, in a similar way, RM9 also will go. So we'll like to first of all change it. So what you can do is that you can add another member that is a IP240. IP240, that's good. Okay, and uh, we will apply the same offset as say for example, this a tablet one is 30 mm. 30 mm and uh, that's good enough. So now we are in a position to uh, edit these connections. So for example, if you go for uh, the CON4, let us just edit it. So, uh, so you can see that here the connection location is identified. So what we can do is that we can just uh, edit it very fast. So, so <clears throat> please remember that idea static member it should not uh, verify any connections, but connections are ways of uh, okay making a link between the various uh, members considered in the analysis and design. So as you can see that this is a member. So. Uh, we need not to spend much time here because these are uh, just uh, intended for uh, connecting the members, not for the connection verification. So what we can do is that as usual, we can quickly add the operation, for example, the end plate. So this is an end plate, okay? So that provides an end plate connection between us. So we can say that idea static automatically uh, adds it and we, we want it on member RM8. We need to be very fast here connected to the member, this analyzed member AM1. And all these things we can keep the same and the top and the bottom what we can do is that for the end plate uh, we can keep it as a minus 30 uh, zero so the top we would like to keep it as a down minus 30 and uh, uh, bottom also we would like to keep it as a minus 30 so we can keep it as a minus 30 minus 30 and uh, we would like to keep it to the the right and the left and the bottom offsets as zero so zero here and the zero here okay 
so so we can say that uh, that's now so if you just see okay so we can see that yes we need to adjust that uh, volts properly okay so for example uh, if you go over here uh, you can just empty it will use and the layers and the so here we'll keep it as a minus 60 and uh, minus 60 okay so that we would like to add the two rows okay minus 60 and minus 60 right and uh, what we can do is that we can uh, have it as a and here the top layers and the left layers for example we can keep it as a minus 15 so let us just see how much is that and 15 and 15 and here also we will keep it as a minus 16 i think that we are we are not having a maybe that we will keep it a little bit more so we can have it as a say minus 25 minus 25 and the right also we can keep it as a minus 25 minus 25 okay so we can see that yes okay almost uh, okay you find that is yes the boards are placed properly as you can see and here obviously we will find that there is a, a plate clash warning this is just because uh, as you can see that yes uh, this is a flange okay the flanges of the two members are clashing that we can obviously straight away um, avoid by creating another manufacturing operation known as the uh, opening and the notch okay and that lets you know uh, how to so we don't want to make any we want to just cut this uh, top flange out so we want to have the cross section part obviously what we want is the arm eight arm eight the top flange and uh, the shape will, will be a notch and we can just provide the required dimensions and the required dimensions so we can have it as a, for example say uh, 70 so we can keep it as a 70 here so let us see the dimensions of notch 70 and we can provide it as a 120 120 hopefully i think that this should this dimension is yes you can see that yes this warning has gone and you can see that yes it is being properly cut and i don't want to keep any notch in the web because i'm not going to uh, perform a detailed verification of the connection so this must be good enough for our uh, member design so it does mean that uh, we have uh, modified the connection uh, 0 and 4 and now for the connection 5 uh, what i would uh, what we would uh, like to do is that uh, we can keep the same connection and uh, for example this is a connection 4 so if i keep the editing so let us save it okay so now this is my connection 4 now if i go to connection 5 uh, it provides you a facility to use the same connection so i would like to use the uh, same connection 4 okay because it is the similar connections so that i will be able to save my time right so i have applied the connection so you can for example uh, now i think that uh, we have uh, applied all the connections for the new uh, two members that is added for the lateral restraint we are in a position to do the calculation so you can just press calculate Okay, so this is uh, the result of uh, the metrician online analysis. We find that the results are almost the same because we have not changed the section. We find that uh, the maximum strain in the plate is only 1.2. I remember the value was 1.1 in the earlier case. It's almost the same. So from the strength point of view, we don't have any problem. So now let us uh, quickly uh, go into the linear buckling analysis verification and see uh, what kind of benefit we are going to have on introducing this lateral restraint. So just like the earlier example, what we do is that we select the NVDA that's a uh, linear buckling analysis and just make the calculate button. So you'll be able to uh, see what are the uh, revised modes, what are the factors of safety of this uh, beam against the various buckling modes, etc. Yes, as you can see that uh, our uh, linear buckling analysis is over. We have got a factor safety of 2.17, right? So a very improved 
okay, buckling uh, strength, buckling resistance. So, because in the earlier case where these two beams are not provided, we have seen that the factors of factor safety was only 0 0.47, indicating that LT beam will cover the design. In this case, we find that the buckling mode one will start only at a load level of 2.17 of times the applied load, which indicates that the beam has got sufficient buckling resistance, and therefore the design will be going to only by the section resistance, right? So now let me quickly take you to the revised buckling mode. So for example, we can go for, uh, the, I have selected the, the mode one, okay, for that D1. So what I can, what I'm interested in, uh, or let me just uh, see that uh, out of plane. So I will be interested in the UI. So, so you can see that uh, how the, okay, the buckling shape has uh, changed. So if I look from the top, it will be much more clear. So look here, see, this is the revised mode. So obviously, as you can see that, due to the introduction of this lateral restraint, you'll find that the buckling mode, earlier the buckling mode was something like this, right? Now it has a change to something like this, okay? Because we have introduced a restraint here, allowing the beam not to have any kind of a buckling at this location. A similar is the case here. So we have got the two cycles of the, something like a sine wave, right? So which says that, the buckling performance of the uh, beam has improved a lot. Okay, fine. So we find that just adding the two beams at the mid spans has improved the buckling resistance a lot. Okay, and uh, please remember that these beams, if they are introduced for the buckling, uh, you can provide the smallest possible size and at the same time ensure that these all these beams are being connected in plan uh, through a, a plan basing systems you know, to ensure that, yes, they, these connecting beams do have the sufficient, what we call as the buckling strength. So, fine. So, that's all regarding this tutorial. So, hopefully, in the next tutorials, I'm planning to add, uh, for example, a critical member like an equipment supporting beam or a platelet beam or something like a cement supporting uh, silo beam, etc., where uh, the, they exactly represent the critical members, where the application of the idea static member will be relevant. Okay, so that's all for the day. Thanks a lot.